Right, quick intro for me for this video, I'll try and keep it short. Uh, a lot of people have asked me about the video explaining the Poisson distribution model, especially for those uh, members who've had it added to their subscription, the draw members, uh, rather than those who've sort of researched it and paid for it upfront. Um, so it's a product that's been added and maybe I haven't explained brilliantly how to use it and I apologise for that. I, I was keen to get it out to you and let you have the value from using it. Um, forgetting that I've been working on it for years and I should have explained a little bit about how it works uh, and exactly what you can expect from it. So uh, my apologies for the delay in getting this video out. There's been a lot going on this week. One of the things that went on this week was I threw my car keys into the tip, uh, what I call the tip, so that's, you know, the um, yeah the, the, the skip at the tip where you put household rubbish in and stuff. We booked a slot to throw some stuff away. I thought I was being clever, putting a load of the stuff in the pouch of my hoodie so I didn't have to go back to the to the car. Uh, and chuck the lot into the skip and the car key fell down to the very bottom uh, yes that was good I was with my wife at the time as well so um, yeah good times managed to get it out amazingly uh, I, you know what the technique to get it out was brilliant I deserved a medal if it wasn't for the fact that I'd have thrown it in at the first time you know but um, got like it's about two meter long um, piece of sort of metal I don't know what it was a bit of like piping and managed to bend the end of it and fish it out like hook a duck and it was hard because the, the skip was full to the top and the bloke at the tip said you're not allowed to go in there and i managed to hook it out and get it out yeah uh, that's one of the reasons why i haven't made the video earlier um yeah so i'm just going to explain i'm going to go through the, the possum pack in in this next uh, video telling you how you can use it uh your personal pack if you want to but also i've now um put a bit more work in and i'm going to be updating every day all of the fixtures that are on that day that are associated with those 20 leagues in the Poisson Pack. I'm going to be posting them in the members area as a spreadsheet that you can look at with all of the odds entered from Betfair showing the value so you don't have to do anything at all. If you want to just go in every afternoon and look at the fixtures that are coming up on the evening um, and if you just want to look at them and see what the odds are, see what the state of play is, you can do that without having to filter anything or do anything at all. So I'm going to do that for you every day. Uh, you can just go in and look at it and have it as a one-stop you know, um, fixture check. Or you've got your personal pack that you can use um, and do what you want with and tinker it and change the odds and use different bookmakers and do whatever it is you want. But for those who um, didn't necessarily sign up for this in the first place, a good place to start would be going onto the members area every day. Uh, it's behind a paywall, so you go into the members area, log in, and you'll see everything that you need to for the, for the day. Um, so I think that's a good place to start. So yeah, I'm sorry that it took so long to get this video out. Uh, there's been a lot going on, not just the tip, but you know, I, I know everyone's the same. But thanks for all the emails and all the feedback. It's been brilliant. I really love getting it. I do uh, take my time getting back sometimes. Apologies for that. It's nothing personal. Um, and yeah, if you've got any other questions, just let me know. I hope this will clear up a lot of what needs to be done or what can be done with the POS Unpack. Um, and I hope the fact that I'm now sort of spoon feeding the and i don't mean that in a patronizing way but now that i'm sort of putting out the fixtures each day um will make it easier for people to use i know that's what i would like to do with it sometimes so uh yeah so watch the video it's a bit long if you're not gonna if you've got no plans on being a member or have no interest in it it might not be the video for you because it is to do with the pack um if you are a member i definitely recommend watching it and if you are thinking that you might want to be a member i definitely recommend watching it if you're not probably skip it Right then, let's crack into this and see if I can give a bit of an explanation um, for how to use the Poisson Pack, what it does, um, and what's updated automatically, what you need to do. Uh, like I say, uh, I know it isn't necessarily as clear as it, as it could be for those members who've had it added to their subscription, who didn't sign up for it in the first place, and quite rightly, you've been asking a few questions about how to use it, so let's have a look at what we've got. So this is one of the packs that you all have been sent out. Uh, Matthew Bond, you're the winner today. Um, I'm using yours as an example. You won absolutely nothing. Um, so if we have a look at this, this is a pack that you've all been sent out. You've got your 20 leagues along the bottom. 19 at the moment because I've still suppressed Australia because Brisbane Raw still haven't scored a goal or conceded a goal at home and it messes up the formulas. Uh, so look, so we've got 19 at the moment and they've all populated uh, accurately which is good because I hadn't checked before yep they're all sweet so we've got 19 leagues this is what you've got if you open it up it'll have your name on it this is what you've got now what you do now is up to you if you want to look at fixtures that 
are in the future or any fixture, any made up fixture, or if you want to look at this weekend's fixture and you want to look at it on your own spreadsheet, that's fine. You see, you select your team here. So if Crystal Palace are playing Aston Villa at home this week, you select that. You see the value odds were changing there to 2.14, 3.63, 3.94. These are the figures that the Poisson distribution model has predicted, if you like. Predict is not a good word, but um, these are the figures that the, the model has generated, that the data in the back end has uh, driven the Poisson distribution model, and these are the value odds. So these are what I call value odds, as you can see here. These are like the fair odds. People will call them all sorts of different things. If you you hear people create their own odds, these are these are what I'm talking about here. So these are the value odds. These are what you should be getting from the bookies according to the form and the averages that the Poisson distribution model uses. And here, this isn't something that I've. Uh, these aren't for the Crystal Palace Villa game because obviously I've just entered this. So if you went onto um, Betfair and had a look at the Crystal Palace versus Villa game for Sunday, uh, Saturday, I think it is. Like, what am I on about? There isn't a Crystal Palace Villa game. So if you did look at the Crystal Palace Villa game, what what might we think the odds say? If we'd gone on Betfair and it said the odds for Palace were 3.10, I think they'd be shorter than that. The odds for the draw would be 3.5 and the Villa win maybe, I don't know, 2.8. Let's just say they've had a good run. Um, you'd see there, so if these were the Betfair odds and we entered them, it automatically conditionally formats it so that it will show you anything that has the real odds has been higher than the value odds. So what that's saying there is if this were the scenario, if you'd just gone onto Betfair, found the odds for this fixture and entered them here, it would show you that the bookies are offering you 3.10 for a Crystal Palace win. And we think they should be shorter odds than that. We think they should be 2.14. So we're getting what I call value there. We're getting a, a higher price from the bookies than we think we actually deserve so that's somewhere where i would be interested in putting on a, a bet or a trade um it's not saying that what what's what you must um sort of realize with that it's not saying that it thinks crystal palace will definitely win although in this instance they are the shortest odds so it is saying that they're the favorites but it won't always be saying that it thinks they should win but it's saying that there's a price discrepancy basically so it's highlighting price discrepancies in the market um, if we look a bit further down, yeah, so the Brighton Norwich game, which would have been uh, a proper fixture, I think, that's coming up this weekend. Um, or was it last weekend? So it's saying Norwich are 4.92 to win, according to the Poisson distribution model, which means they're, they're underdogs because Brighton are 2.35. But when you enter the odds from Betfair, the odds that they're offering you for Brighton are 1.53. So they're favourites for the Poisson distribution model and for Betfair, but Betfair have them way shorter than they should be, according to our estimations. And this is a past... Yeah, this finished nil-nil, didn't it? Um, and it's saying there's value in Norwich. And, I, of course, I actually placed a, a lay bet on this at the weekend and won because it finished nil-nil. Um, so you can see here... It's saying there's value there because they're saying um, it's 8.60 they're giving you, but uh, Poisson is saying 4.92. So Poisson isn't saying it thinks Norwich will win, but it is saying if you're looking for value, that's where the value is. And definitely with the draw, it's saying the draw should have been at 2.69, but you're getting 4.30 on the draw, which is massive. Um, and this is a perfect lay opportunity in my eyes because if you've got two two scores that are offering value that means obviously the third one is not offering value so if you're in the betfair exchange for those that don't know you can lay and back uh, selections and what laying selections means basically is you're saying it won't happen so instead of saying i'm backing norwich to win you're saying i'm backing brighton not to win so that gives you the draw and the norwich win on your side so obviously the odds will be um, shorter than if you just back a norwich win but to lay Brighton it means that you're you're betting, betting against Brighton winning and that looks like a good opportunity there so that's how the win draw win works uh, and what a lot of people um, quite rightly and uh, whenever I'm explaining this I'm not um, suggesting people should know any any of the why's it's my my communication that's been lacking so what people are sometimes confused about is the fact that they don't see this pack updating or changing and I'm saying it's updating every day well the reason is it is updated every day, but I've hidden the data sheets because it's not something that I want people to accidentally uh, change and mess with. So you won't see these change every day because you need to go in and change those if you wish to change them. 
and it will give you the fixture. But what is changing is the data that's driving these value predictions. And I'll just show you, if you look at the hidden sheets for the Premier League, this is what you're not seeing. And there's one of these for every single league. And this is where the Poisson distribution calculation is done. It's in a hidden sheet, which is linked to my master sheet, so that this data is updated every single day overnight. Um, somebody asked me what time it was. It's I don't. It updates a few times a day. Um, it uses a function um, called import HTML. Uh, if you if you want to Google it, it's um, it's a function in in Google Sheets that imports data from a HTML sheet into my personal spreadsheet, which I then check, and then we use um, import range, which will import the data from my spreadsheet to your spreadsheet. If you use import HTML on everybody's spreadsheet, it goes too slow and Google doesn't like the amount of calls you're making on the internet. Um, so that's the technical sort of side of it. But rest assured, and you can go in and check it, you know, make sure I'm not I'm not blagging and pretending I'm updating things. Um, but rest assured, this data is updated a few times a day. So somebody asked me if it would definitely be ready on a Saturday morning, for example, uh, for the early kickoffs, and yes, it will. It will be all updated plenty in plenty of time. Whenever a game kicks off, you can rest assured that unless it's 15 minutes after the last game, so on a Friday when there's a, uh, no, Friday, a Saturday when there's a half five game, I mean, if some of the three o'clock's finished at five o'clock, you might still be using the data from you know the previous game week. But really, you'd want to be doing that because you don't want it to update that quickly because you're still in the same game week and you want the data consistent for that game week. You don't want it to change after every single game. So basically you're going to be you set for your data to be accurate this is where all the calculations are done so when i talk about the averages goals average goals and stuff this is where the poisson calculation is done um it gives us we use the goals for and goals against at home and away as you can see two different ones and then we calculate an attacking strength and a defensive strength for both teams which gives us this figure here and then if we go into the sheet this is something else that's hidden because again it's not something i want messed with because it will ruin everything um this sheet has got all of the sort of lookups that will say look up the team in this cell and give me their attacking strength and their defensive strength look up the away team from this cell give me their attacking strength and defensive strength calculate the goal expectancy based on those figures and then we'll put it into this Poisson distribution uh, matrix that will tell us the likelihood of each score being uh, coming to fruition. That will then drive the odds because we'll add these up. These will be all calculated to see what percentages are given overall. So we're giving Palace 46.74%, the draw 275 Villa 25.39. And then I've calculated that, um, converted that into decimal odds, which is then pulled over to here. And we've got it to two decimal places here, but only one here. So this is a direct link to here. Um, and then the correct score market will, the correct scores will pull out the top five scores from here. So you can see 1 nil, 13.8%. That's the first one. 1 1, 12.8%. The second one, 0 nil, 10.1, nil, 2 nil, uh, and nil 1. So that's there. That pulls those through for the Dutching or the correct score and gives you the percentage. Um, and then the Dutching calculator does its bit there, uh, which is a formulation. Uh, again, there's more hidden sheets, uh, hidden cells, which is, yeah, this is all the Dutching stuff and it's got all the all the formulas. Um, so that's how it works. That's how your sheet works. That's how it's updated every day. Um, and that's how you can use it. Now, I understand that you might not want to necessarily go in and select the fixtures each day because it's a bit of a pain um, it's too laborious I'm sure you'll understand from me I've got over a hundred members at the moment and if I I would have to go in and physically select Man City versus Spurs over a hundred times but never, so you can imagine if I went into everybody's sheet to do that because I haven't found a way to get it automated I know there are ways and I haven't found a way um, so what I have decided to do every day for people is to go in uh, to my personal sheet, select the fixtures for that day, put the odds in, and post it live on the website. So as you can see from yesterday, this is the 6th of April, and these were the fixtures from yesterday. Burnley Everton predicted a Burnley win. We got that one. Uh, the Championship, these were the Championship ones. Bundesliga had a nice win with the 
Augsburg game. Oh, and actually, somebody, um, Graham, thanks for your email, asked me about the uh, how to use the pack and the correct score because um, it said it looked like I had all of the Augsburg games covered yesterday. Um, what that was on my video show, I placed a trade on uh, Augsburg to win, a sing just a one-off win draw win, and then I also put a bet on a trade on the two most likely scores that resulted in an Augsburg win. Um, so I had 2-1 and 1-0. Uh, and because the game was coming in at 2-1 with about 80 minutes left, I decided to to trade out of my position to guarantee a profit. So what happens there in Betfair when you trade out of that position, um, you're basically sort of laying those two scores and backing the other scores. It's complicated. Basically, it means when you trade out, you're guaranteed a level profit regardless of what the um, outcome is. So it appeared on that screen as though I'd bet on every single game and had got, uh, what was it, I don't know, I don't know a, 13 pound, a £30 pound profit regardless of what scoreline it was. Well, if I'd have left it to run, I would have actually won sixty-four pound. Um, that was the score, and that was the profit on two-one. But because I cashed it out, being careful, because I'm more of a trader than a better, I actually equalised my profit as thirty pounds. So basically, it was a cash out. It was a cash out, and it meant whatever I got, whatever score came, I'd cashed out and got thirty pound. But on the Betfair exchange, the way it works is it basically means it shows you that whatever score line you're going to get thirty pounds. So it's the same as cashing out basically. So I hadn't bet on every score line. I had only bet on the two. Um, and that's how that worked. So this is what I do for you every day now. You've got these that I've filled in, and I'm going to do it again for today. So obviously it's only the, it's only early morning. Uh, so these are for you to access on the on the members part of the website. So if you go to the website and you go to Pros and Daily Fixtures, you'll see them here. Pros and Pat Daily Fixtures. It's a dynamic sheet, and every time I change it, it will update, and I will change it every day. So every day you can go in here and just look at what's going on with this with the score so you don't have to do anything you can just look at it and say okay Dave's already inputted it today as in yesterday Burnley are playing Everton right the odds suggest that okay yeah we're looking at real odds of 2.66 I might might be interested in in backing Burnley for that scores yep yeah, okay they're the scores um and that's that's what I've been messing with that sheet just so normally I won't show the Betfair uh correct score odds because I don't know which bookies people are going to use and so I'll probably skim it off so that you'll just see the correct score and the percentages and you can do as you will with that but um so yeah and so it's obviously just it works just like an excel sheet but it's not editable it's just you going through and so if you want to use the possum pack in its simplest form you don't have to mess with your personal one your personal one's more for if you want to go in and change uh look at future future um, matches or if you want to change the stake on your dutching you can change that and it will change the figures here as you can see it will change how much you should stake on each game um yeah you can you can change the bookmaker odds obviously because i'm using betfair you might be using bet365 or william hill or whatever so you might want to put different bets in there and see if you're still getting value so that's why you might want to use your personal one if you don't want to do any of that don't worry about that personal spreadsheet and just worry about this one on the website that is behind a paywall that you can only get to if you remember and it will show you everything you need um, so I hope that that clears that up a little bit. Um, one other question that was asked was to do with the draw selections and how they correspond to the Poisson and basically they don't. The Poisson distribution model, one of the flaws of the Poisson distribution model, it needs correcting. Uh, the, there is, a, there is a, a correction or an improvement model uh, which I'm trying to implement as well which is the Dixon Coles model which I've discussed with a couple of members. Um, there's an underestimation of draws in the Poisson distribution model. It doesn't work well with the nil-nil scoreline and the one-one scoreline. It it tends to underestimate them um, due to various factors in the in the calculations, and it's been long discussed. There's lots of papers about it. It it's more the one-one than the nil-nil, I think, um, but it does underestimate them. So it's not as reliable as you'd like for the draw, which is why I don't use it to even uh, cross-check my draw selection. My draw selections are much more rigorously uh, checked and sort of filtered than the Poisson one. So if you see uh, if you see me send out a, a draw selection that says Nottingham versus Coventry is going to be a draw, for example, and then you come on here and you say, oh, this says Nottingham win, don't don't read anything into that, basically. Um, they're, they're two very different calculations and as I say, the, the Poisson one is 
commonly known, if you look on the internet, you'll see it's not great for predicting straight draws. So that's where, that's where those two um, overlap. In terms of what I think you should be doing with the, the model, I, I really, I've always been keen from the start not to sort of um, direct people to, to put their money where I tell them to. I know the draw selection, that's a, that's a different thing and people are well aware that I'm sending that out and saying, this is where I think the draws are coming. But with the Poisson pack, it's very much a data pack and I'm happy to give um, ideas on what I, what I would do with it. Um, I like, I personally like bets like this. The Nottingham, if, if this is um, available where you've got the Poisson pack is saying there's a favourite and it's at home and it's also saying that you're getting good odds on that. So if you can get a home favourite that is also showing value, I quite like to look at those. I also like, as I mentioned um, in one of the previous examples, which I don't know if there is one on here, um, I like the lay of the of the home team as well, if you can get the odds. Um, I'm not sure if there was one yesterday as an example. Yeah, oh, actually, yeah, I did lay Palmer, uh, and I made a profit because it ended 4-3, but for a long period of the game, it was Como were winning at one point, and then it was drawing, and I managed to cash out for a nice profit. Uh, that's another thing you don't have to. I don't advise leaving these sort of bets to to run. I, I advise trading them out. So at about eighty minutes, I think it was Como were drawing. So I cashed out for a nice profit. I traded out for a profit there, even though Palmer went on to win the game. So what I'm looking for there is a, a section of the game, really a snapshot of the game where my trade is winning, and then I'll be cashing out. I don't really care what the final score is, as long as there's a section of that game that I'm winning, I can get in and out of the market. So I like these, I like these lays, I like the home wins. Um, I tend to use those quite often. Um, and then if I've got a home win that I think maybe is too short for me to get involved in the actual win draw win market, for example, pressure, um, 1.51, I mean, the real odds suggesting 1.67. So there's a bit of value there, but I might not really be all that interested in it. That's when I might skip over to the, to the Dutch in market. Uh, and I might put these four scores on, and I wouldn't put the draw on because I'm I'm back in the home win. I might put those four scores on. Um, I might even trim it down myself if I think that you know Vicenza haven't got a chance of scoring, which I don't normally do because I like to give the the chance of an away goal. But you see what I mean. I might go over there and think, well, there's not enough value there for me. I'm going to go to the score market instead. So there are a few examples of how you might use it. Um, I'll, I'll try and sort of do some more in-depth analysis on how you can use it. This video has already got longer than I planned. I'm sorry about that. I know it's 10 minutes is the optimal time for a YouTube video, apparently. All these uh, YouTube analytics tell you, and I'm, I waffle too much for that. So this is over 20 minutes. Um, but I hope for those of you that are members, this has been helpful and has pointed out what you can do with the pack and how it can be used easily and sort of without any user input at all by just checking out the website. Um, and I apologise for the lack of communication up to this stage. Uh, I, I just wanted to get this out to you and, and make it available and give you the extra sort of the extra product. But I should have communicated how you use it a little bit more because I appreciate it. it could have been confusing. Right then, thanks very much. If there are any other questions, please feel free to email. A lot of you, a lot of you email, and I love getting emails from you. And I, I, I am sometimes slow in responding, but it's not anything personal. Even the ones that have got. I wouldn't say criticisms, but even ones that might require me to do some further thinking, I still reply to them and I'm still welcoming them. It's just, yeah, um, it's, there's a lot going on at the moment. So thanks a lot and um, I'll be back soon. <laughs> See ya.